This is Norton Sales, a salvage yard and spare parts shop on a rough industrial strip in North Hollywood, California. Hey, Adam. Hey, Carlos. How you doing? Good. Owned by Carlos Guzman, it looks like the kind of junkyard you'd go to on a weekend afternoon to find a spare part for your Harley. But it's also the kind of junkyard where you can find a spare control panel from Houston Mission Control, a shelf full of valves from a Saturn rocket, a fuel tank for liquid oxygen. These were the kind of parts that went into the mighty Saturn V rockets that took men to the moon from the 1960s to the early 1970s. This summer, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, moved the last remaining Saturn V on Earth from outside, where it had been rusting for the last 35 years, to a brand new building. This is a big freaking rocket. It's 36 stories from top to bottom. It's the rocket that took Apollo astronauts to the moon. But don't think about it as a rocket. Think about it as thousands of complicated components built by hundreds of different contractors, most of whom are today out of business. Those hundreds of contractors and thousands of parts helped the U.S. beat Russia to the moon. But the goal was to win that race. Well, we ran that race, but at the end, the system was too expensive to operate, and so we basically shut it down. And when that system was shut down over 35 years ago, most of the engineers who worked on those big rockets went on to other things. But they left all their files, right? I mean, you'd think there'd be a file somewhere containing the collected knowledge of the multi-billion dollar Apollo program. Well, not so much. There's not the Apollo 101 handbook that tells us everything. This is why we did this, this is why we did this, this is why we did this. We do have a lot of drawings that say what, not so much why. And a lot of the people who knew why aren't around anymore. They got in the business and did very well for 10, 15, even 20 years. And then they ended up, many of them sold their businesses. Those products went away. Often these drawings would get lost. These valve companies change hands. It's, it's happened many times. And some of them were just, like I said, went out of business. So NASA was left without a lot of the technical information that got us to the moon, which wouldn't be a big deal, except now we're supposed to be headed back there and to Mars after that. In 2004, a presidential initiative set in motion a new NASA moon program called ARIES. The ambitions are Apollo-sized. The budget is not. At the time we did the, the Saturn, uh, NASA was, was consuming about 4% of the total federal budget, 4%. Today, we have about six-tenths of one percent, only just a small fraction. How do you save the money? Don't reinvent the wheel. Or the thruster. That Saturn V rocket rusting outside the museum in Huntsville became a busy archaeological site. NASA engineers and technicians brushed away 35 years of dirt and cobwebs, reached into the rocket's guts, and yanked out the old switches, control panels, and valves, and brought them down the road to the Marshall Space Flight Center. It's been the home of America's rocket builders since the U.S. military brought Werner von Braun's team over from Germany after World War II. You just pulled this right out of a Saturn V? Yeah. Yes, we did. Did you, did you actually go in with tools? I mean, did you guys take it out? Or did Personally, I did not take it out. Our technicians did, but I was there for the process. And uh, yeah, we used a lot of tools and people got really dirty doing it. There were a lot of varmint infestation, I guess you could say, inside different parts. Dave Hewitt and Will Cartagena are part of the Ares team at NASA. Today, their job is to reverse engineer Saturn parts that were built before they were born. This piece is typical. It's a valve built to bleed off excess high-pressure hydrogen. That's rocket fuel. They'll clean it and get it working again as a way of communing with the engineers who built it. The routing, the timing, the durations, any bins, why things were done, you know, they may have gone through four or five iterations before they reach the final answer. And just because we see the final answer doesn't mean that we understand the importance of something. Was it actually being pressurized? Is this pit, there's a piston in here. That's beautiful. And so is that a, a rubber gasket around it or a seal? Or... To these rocket scientists, it's another piece of the puzzle. But what the engineers at Huntsville have is only a fraction of the hardware out there. That's where Norton Sales comes in. You might find a holy grail here. <laughs> This dumping ground for Apollo and Saturn subcontractors has become the go-to place for those trying to understand how we got astronauts to the moon the first time. Astronauts like Buzz Aldrin, who was in that very first lunar lander back in 1969. <laughs> um, well, what can I find here? He's come to Norton Sales to check out the hardware that helped get him there. The ghost of technology passed. So it was a prototype, but it, did it, I mean, could it have worked? Like, yes, it, work? it could have been tested, yeah. 
Aldrin isn't surprised that there are gaps in the technical record of the 1960s space race. Instead of just getting the first stage till it's perfect and the second stage till it's perfect, we tested uh, things all in a hurry because we were interested in, in saving time. NASA still has to move fast, but now the agency has to save money, too. They're tracking down as much of the old hardware as they can. We cast our net as wide as we can to go find the hardware that we need. Yeah, if people come in and say, hey, I've got something uh, that you might want to look at or might want to use, absolutely we're open to that.